Did you hear the timeline that she said? Now, that's very significant considering everything is being streamlined. You got to put everything together. Listen to the timeline that she was ta- that she talked about in here for substantial. This is what the uh, how many what's the percentage here? 42, I think it's said 42 percent of their their big financial institutions that were surveyed believe that this is the timeline for RWA, which will bring easily, I believe, easily trillions of dollars scaled into quadrillions to these uh, uh, to these utility coins that will be at the forefront of RWA. But wait, but wait, I'm going to play it for you. Let's listen. Listen to this. Turn it up a little bit so you can hear it. Time frame in 2023. Furthermore, 42% of the survey respondents agree that blockchain will become the dominant form of infrastructure for financial markets. Wait, wait, wait. However, it glitched a little bit. Also, 15% of respondents' time frame. Let's play that again. Furthermore, 42% of the survey respondents agree that blockchain will become the dominant form of infrastructure for financial Somebody go to this video, right? I don't know why that's happening. That is so strange. Go to 51 minutes and seven seconds and tell me if it's glitching for you when she says uh, uh, time frame in 2023. Furthermore, 42 percent of survey respondents agree and it only glitches right here. Agree that blockchain will become the dominant form of instrument for financial markets. Now, this is reinforcing. She's doubling down on what she said earlier. But why is this glitching now? Is it just maybe it's just my computer? But just that little part is glitching. You hear that? Do you hear that? Is that not strange? Maybe it's maybe I'm re- looking too much into it, but I don't think I am. But anyway, um, now she's going to get to the good part. Let me continue. Let's continue here. We'll see if it'll play. Become the dominant form of interest for financial markets. It's glitching again. However. There is also 15%. Only on that part. <laughs> the, when it says the dominant form, it only glitches on that part. Oh, my word. All right, let's keep going. Ten of respondents who disagreed and a larger 42% who remain uncertain. When asked on the timeline of tokenization, timeline. respondents believe that a substantial degree of tokenization would most likely occur at least three years from now. This is largely due to the fact that implementation will require significant effort, both technically and in terms of governance. Three years from now, three of substantial. So that means that over that time is happening is actually happening significantly to get to that point. But when they say substantial, what are we talking? They don't put a percentage to it. We're talking about three quarters of the world uh, uh, to- has uh, most of what's valuable tokenized at that point. She said substantial. So we can take a lesser degree of that and put that for each of those years it's collecting up into a substantial amount that makes sense i'm sorry i'm not so eloquent today it was a hard day today folks um but three years so what we have right now what we're looking at we're looking at the trillions of dollars that we're we're heading towards no guarantee not financial advice that we're heading towards because of interbank payments right um cross-border payments b2b and retail cross-border payments or remittances however you want to put that we're looking at all of those trillions right then we're also looking at the trillions and quadrillions within a three-year this is what they're saying of course timelines are not written in stone we've seen their timelines change a lot of different a lot of different times but this is what they're saying so at least we have some sort of idea right although there's no guarantees but then so now we're adding this three years from what from this point from this point that we could see substantial amounts of tokenization when it comes to real world assets. And this is coming from institutions. Once again, she doubled down on it, right? She came back and said it again to let it, to, to, to let that be known that this is something they really believe that blockchain is going to become the dominant um, form or dominant financial instrument. That's this is what they're saying. Go watch this video, right? But let's keep going. Let's find out. Let's see what else they have to say. See, and this is why I said we were going to come back to this because this video just has so much information. And did you watch the whole thing? She's telling. and She's not the only one. Let's keep going. Investors and policymakers have different views on the ideal settlement cycle. Other inefficiencies largely due to the manual administrative processes involved in bond issuance. Um... 
Furthermore, there are many regulatory and governance hurdles that need to be overcome. And this is why I think it's important that they're getting this out of the way now. You see a lot of um, experimentation with the tokenization of bonds, etc., T bills, etc. Get that out of the way first. Everything else will be much easier, right? Um, now, back to what I was saying with the streamlining. Notice how everybody's putting a rush on streamlining everything, making it so easy. Oh, Flair's talking about you can deploy these smart contracts with one line of code and Quant's making everything simple. Stellar's making everything simple. Uh, Ripple's making everything. I'm talking about super simple, folks. That's not for retail. That's for the financial institutions. But why? Why? Well, first of all, let's acknowledge they think that we're going to become extremely dominant. Second of all, remember what the BIS said about two, three years ago, and they repeated it in multiple documents where they said, hey, listen, um, we just want to be able to utilize the technology. We don't want to have to actually build it. And this is why they've been working hand in hand with the private sector so much. Um, with everything they've been handed, the private sector pretty much built everything that they're using. All of these different projects that they've been working on, they're hev heavily, you know, you have a, a heavy hand of the private sector is involved there. Um, so what they want is something that's super easy to deploy and super easy to control. They only want to reap the benefits, which means, which is one of the reasons why, right? We're putting all this together, which is one of the reasons why we were always in advance of them. You can't pass us if all you're doing is taking from us. You're never going to get the golden key. They don't have it. So this is why you're seeing these simultaneous articles come out, in my humble opinion, uh, where you have Swift, you know, talking about how they want to continue to advance themselves and work with the private sector. Um, then you have China you know, uh, 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 in the BRICS nations talking about their their systems as well, which also have what heavy dealings with the private sector. They can't move forward without the private sector. Then you put it together with what the governmental uh, uh, representatives have been saying globally about their fears of fragmentation. What's the remedy for that? The only remedy for their fear of fragmentation is interoperability, who has true global interoperability. Only the utility coins, the bank coins, the private sector. Once again, this is why crypto across the board at the top is super bullish. And now we're seeing more and more activity of us moving closer and closer to uh, uh, mainstream adoption. Every single day, the regulators get a little bit more lenient with crypto, a little bit more bullish on crypto. They treat it a little bit more uh, uh, positively. So now when it's being reported, also, I'm keeping that media, that mainstream media uh, aspect in mind. Now that it, when they have to report on how regulators are dealing with crypto, it sounds a little bit better to the mainstream, right? So one thing I'm going to keep my eye on is the top utility coins moving out of uh, their value being 100% or not 100%, but mostly uh, based on speculation. And at some point in the next few years, there will be that swap. You're going to see the big companies leading the way and making that push for it where these uh, uh top utility coins, their value will be uh, mostly based in utility use. They're going to be used 100%. And I think that's why it's a huge possibility of some of these because some of them becoming very rare. Those private ecosystems will eat these native tokens up. Um, you see now that the P they have shifted the people's minds away from the native protocols and onto other things like meme coins, right? And, and, uh, um, and coins that really don't have any real utility at all, their minds are on there because now the people have been conditioned to believe that's not really conditioned, but they've been conditioned as well as they've seen that these things make them quick money. They want that quick money. They need it. It's been harsh economic conditions, but that conditioning is there. So they're looking over here while the big companies are going over there. You see the trick, right? Um, so let's keep going. She said a little bit more. Before tokenizing various asset classes become a reality. The benefits of DLT and making financial market infrastructure frictionless and more efficient are there. But more work needs to be done to ensure that the long-awaited revolution continues. Look how she talks about it. The long-awaited revolution. Who is she talking about? It's not for the regular people. Who, who was waiting long for the so-called revolution? Who's considering this a revolution? Interesting. It's the companies. The big businesses. The same ones who tried to convince the regular people that crypto was nothing. Crypto was bad. They're the ones who were waiting for this for this a long time. Oh, something that's a revolution, something that now they're unveiling. They're telling the truth. Finally, that is going to change everything. Haven't I been saying that? A lot of us researchers have been saying this. Crypto and a blockchain DLT will be the dominant 
uh, the dominant thing around the world. Everything will have to interact with it at some point. Uh, but let's keep going. See what else she says. Thank you, everyone, for listening. I encourage you all to download the report to explore further. OK, so we're going to leave off there. We may come back. There's a lot more left to this video to tear apart a lot. I hope you go watch this yourself. But let's go here. Look at what's happening. You see, all of this is coming together at the same time. So then you have things like this. This article is titled Japan Considers Loosening Crypto Rules as Companies Launch Blockchain, blockchain Initiatives. Really? You see, Japan is always uh, at the forefront of technological explosions, at least from my understanding. Uh, first of all, they, 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 they're very advanced. And second of all, they need it. Their financial infrastructure has not been doing well. Um, their financial situation has not been doing well, right? So they they want blockchain and they need it. Now, SBI and Ripple have been making big moves in Japan. And they've kept it quiet to a degree. But those of us who are in the know, we know, right? Um, both Ripple, as well as the head of, of, of uh, SBI, believe that Japan will run on XRP. That's what that representative said from SBI. Um, and they're taking it serious. And not only that, they want, they made it clear, they want their people to make a good amount of money off of XRP. SBI said they're, they're looking into different ways for their people to make um, a good yield off of XRP. But it says this, consideration is being uh, driven in part by a growing number of Japanese firms that are exploring blockchain relative initi uh, related initiatives, initiatives Bloomberg reported Tuesday, September 17th, Prime Minister Fumio Kishida has prioritized Web3, but his tenure is nearing an end. And it is not known if any of those who aim to su succeed him favor regulatory adjustments in this field. According to the report, under Kishida, regulators made it easier to list digital tokens and crypto exchanges per the report. Japan also unveiled stablecoin rules and developed a framework uh, for crypto exchanges that focuses on protecting investors. They're getting ready, but they're not the only ones. They're not the only ones. They're getting ready, right? Look at the simultaneous movement. They're getting ready. The UK, the, uh, the, Quant just came out with some sort of, uh, I saw some news about Quant somewhere. I, I can't remember where, um, about their progress working with the Bank of England on their whole financial infrastructure. So the UK is getting ready. Europe is definitely getting ready. The United States, we know what they're doing in the United States. The private sector is going to lead the way in the United States. And without a shadow of a doubt, Latin America, you have the bank coin companies, utility coin companies all over the place getting in deep where there's going to be a lot of real world asset tokenization um, done. And in the beginning of this video, this Omfi video that we've been breaking down lately, that's one of the first things they talk about, the tokenization of commodities, but it's commodities across the board. All types of commodities people don't even think about day to day are going to be tokenized. That's a lot of value on chain. That's a lot of traceability. Then on top of that, remember, there's going to be paychecks. They have payroll. Rip, Ripple has the offering for payroll. And I think a, a couple of other bank coin companies have offerings for payroll. We'll be rolling across chain as well. The future looks so unbelievable. Most people can't even believe it. Um, so so they're getting the world is getting ready. Somebody might say, well, what about Australia? Remember, for years, Australia was working with Ripple. This is what the article said. Go look this up for yourself. Ripple. Hedera is down there deep in there. And I'm sure there's a lot of other companies that uh, have been working in Australia as well that they try not to even make it big news. Right. So all around the world and we don't have to talk about Africa. We've talked about Africa so many times. Um, Algorand is in Africa. Hedera is in Africa. Cardano is in Africa. I think uh, it's Ripple. I think Ripple is also in Africa. Um, so all around the world, they're getting ready. Think about the value, the, the, the total of that value. Even if we take a piece of it to start, it's only going to grow year to year once all of this starts actually occurring, happening. Um, once it's all up and running, you have that flip of the switch moment. What does it do to that price? And here they're telling you. So we're breaking this down. Don't worry. There's other videos. There's other videos where they're telling and we're going to put our detective cap on and we're going to break those down as well. Um, but now let's go here. Let's go here because once again, we're seeing the signs that crypto is getting ready to go mainstream and it's led by Bitcoin, the Bitcoin activity. It's not just Bitcoin itself. The activity surrounding Bitcoin will filter out and it will touch everything else, right? It says here, SEC approves 
options for BlackRock spot Bitcoin ETF. When regular people hear this, see, they have to report on this now. When regular people hear this, they say, oh, wait, wait a minute. Maybe crypto is not so bad. Their minds start to change. That conditioning starts to unravel. They're doing this on purpose. Everything now, why? It says the SEC notice seemed uh, notice seemed to be an industry first after the commission approved the listing and trading of, of spot Bitcoin exchange traded funds on U.S. exchanges in January. The United States Securities Exchange Commission gave NASDAQ the go ahead to list and trade shares of options for BlackRock spot Bitcoin exchange traded fund or ETF. In a September 20th notice, the SEC approved options trading for the iShares Bitcoin Trust under the ticker symbol IBIT on NASDAQ that we know options quote options on IBIT will be physically settled with American style exercise unquote said the SEC notice quote. The exchange stated that options on IBIT will be subject to the exchange's respective initial and continued listing standards. The exchange's initial listing standards require, among other things, that the security underlying a listed option be, uh, quote, characterized by a substantial number of outstanding shares that are widely held and are actively traded. My what I take from this when I boil it down to its essence, Bitcoin is leading the way towards mass adoption for crypto as a whole. You saw what happened the other day. We had some big wig come out and say that, hey, I think the next uh, ETF will be Solana, even though a lot of people said they don't think it would be Solana. This individual came out the other day, say, yeah, I think Solana is coming. Huh? Really? And I said this Solana and XRP are up to bat. I don't know when, but and I'm not like a huge supporter of ETF, but I'm a supporter of anything positive that can happen that brings more value, more um in, in, in a variety of ways, because value can come directly, but also value can come through good publicity. Good publicity is, is priceless. And that brings more people into the know of utilizing these things or, you know, uh, putting or investing in, in, in these things. And that's positive. So I'm all for that 100 um, percent. So. So, yeah, mass adoption is creeping up. So now that you have that information. What are you going to do with it? I know what I'm going to do with it. So until next time, everybody, let's get to the money.